Conga drumming can be very rewarding when you develop the right technique and rhythms, but it can also be very painful, and the difference between pain and reward is sometimes a very fine line. That's why I put a list together of the do's and don'ts of conga drumming. So watch this video to the end if you want to level up your drumming today. Coming up. Hi, my name is Kevin Zahner. Welcome to Rhythm Notes, a channel with a lot of videos about conga drumming, drum set, and other popular percussion. And if you want free lesson PDFs, subscribe to my newsletter, Rhythm Insider, at rhythminsider.com. You'll get a free gift when you confirm your subscription. My earliest curiosity about conga drumming started in high school when an older peer of mine came back from a jazz exhibition and was obsessed with getting a good sounding conga slap. I always thought you'd just mute the drum with the side of your hand and you know strike it with your fingers. And, and this is a sound you can make that sounds good, but it wasn't the technique this guy was trying to develop. He was hitting the drum so hard, uh, it was intense for some of us to watch this, and it, and it even looked like uh, it was super painful too. Uh, about a year later, our school hired a new percussion teacher uh, for drum set lessons and small ensembles, and he introduced some of us to proper techniques on congas. We learned that uh, a great sounding slap was not about pain at all. So I thought about that story and that experience in high school when I was kind of, you know, thinking about this video and putting it together, putting the list together. Uh, so the do's and don'ts of conga drumming is really a conversation that we could have for hours. And you may find that some master percussionists don't agree on certain issues and, and that some issues are more important than others. So I put together a list of uh, a handful of do's and don'ts, you know, mostly for beginners that I've learned from my teachers and that uh, I found to be very helpful in uh, my development on the instrument. Now, starting off with number one, do practice slowly and develop your strength over many weeks, months, and years. Conga drumming is not about a sprint. It's not even a marathon. It's a long journey that takes a long time, uh, you know, to see key milestones along the way. Don't hit the drums hard because you think it will lead to better results, like my buddy back in high school. Hitting the drum harder should be about more volume, you know, not the only way to get a better sound. You know, that's just not true at all. Do become obsessed with relaxation. You know, it, it should feel more like meditation if you're doing it right. Keep your posture straight while letting your shoulders sink to the ground and feel your mind and body enjoy every drop of the heel stroke and acceleration of the toe stroke you know, before immediately relaxing your forearm. Don't keep playing when your muscles tense up or hurt. Conga drumming is intense on your body. As I, as I mentioned earlier, it takes like time to build up strength on the instrument. So, you know, listen to your body and, and rest an appropriate amount of time in between practice sessions. But, but don't rest too much. You know, unless you have serious damage to your hands or your arms, your body can usually recover within a day or so. Uh, I once had to stop playing congas for about four weeks because I played too many rehearsals and gigs without warming up. It actually sounded like like a creaking door. It was loud and actually, you know, a bit nauseating to hear, but I was lucky. Um, I didn't need surgery, uh, braces, and, and rest was enough to let the inflammation go down. And, uh, but it was scary though. I, I thought for sure this would mean surgery and potentially a long recovery, but luckily, luckily it just, it wasn't the case. So on that same note, I mean, do warm up before practicing or performing. You know, if you stretch your muscles slowly and in the right ways, 
You'll, you'll prepare them for more beneficial practice and you, you'll achieve your goals sooner than if you skip the warm-ups. You know, and, and don't rush your warm up. Uh, this is the don't that's related to this one. This is this is a slow down to speed up sort of issue. You know, if you're if you're short on time, the bare minimum should be 10 to 15 minutes of heel toe exercises at slow tempos, with a small increase in tempo when you're feeling strong yet yet still relaxed. If you're getting value out of this video, hit that like button and please share it with someone who you think will also get value out of it. Number four on this list, uh, do practice the traditional conga patterns. The traditional patterns provide you with a way to move around the instrument, so it's, it's crucial that you develop proficiency on these rhythms. Uh, plus, many of them come from folkloric rhythms and, and can open up your mind to musical concepts and ideas that you might not otherwise have ever really learned. You know, let's let's take one one ko for example. It's a pattern that sounds good on a variety of pop music. How about uh, a basic tumbao? Fuego en mi corazón. Fuego, fuego en mi alma. Fuego, fuego en mi corazón. Fuego. On the other hand, these traditional patterns are not the only way to play conga drums. So don't think that those are the only patterns you can play on the instrument. You know, we can explore rhythms and techniques like uh, the hand-to-hand -hand techniques that a lot of the American conga uh, drummers developed in uh, uh, playing on funk and soul albums in the 1960s and 70s. If you want more information on conga drumming, search Google for rhythm notes and conga drumming, as well as anything else related to drumming that you might be interested in. And number five, do practice with a metronome. Practicing with a metronome is crucial for developing your inner sense of time and, and training your muscles to move with a cer certain feel of the rhythm. But if you never get away from the metronome, you might not develop your time to its full potential. So don't rely on the metronome as a crutch. Timing should be more about a consensus, you know, among musicians who you play with. So, you know, by practicing with and without a metronome, the training wheels will, will come off a bit and, you know, you don't become reliant on the metronome to tell where to place your strokes. I could go on and on about do's and don'ts for conga drumming, but we'll have more time in another video, so please let us know your do's and don'ts in the comments below, and uh, of course, don't hesitate to ask any questions as well. If you like this video and you want to watch more, check out this one suggested to you by YouTube, and check out this one suggested to you by Rhythm Notes. Please subscribe so we can help you level up your drumming today, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.